that we kind of wrapped up the uh, ratcheting section, which is the method you should always use as far as crimping, because with the ratcheting, you're always going to get a uniform crimp. Um, we're going to go to, or or rather repeatable crimp, that's pretty much, uh, you can, you're going to know what you're going to get, whereas you've got varying force when you're using a manual crimper like this. Um, we're going to go ahead and start testing these uh, manual crimpers. And we're going to go with the uh, same, looks like uh, the Dodge uh, OEM wire harness cable, the purple, and we're going to see how it performs. So here we go. Um, we're going to, of course, have to use on these tools the red, which, of course, says it's rated up to 22 gauge, right? So let's see how it does. Okay. And that's all the way down, as you can see, right there. So, complete crimp here. Okay. It did not damage the heat shrink. Now, let's see. A little tug. Pretty good. Doesn't just pull out. <clears throat> that's pretty good. That's the dollar crimper. Yeah, I'm pulling away the insulation before I pull that away. I'm going to now use uh, some pliers on it. Let's see. Okay. Looks like it was a pretty good crimp. Um, looked like we might have had some breakaway on the wires. Let me find it. Okay, couldn't find the other end. We went ahead and stripped some fresh wire, and we're going to... We're going to pass this to the next uh, level. Uh, did pretty good. We're going to go to the uh, Quinn from Harbor Freight. And we're going to give this one crimp as well. Try to get it in the same position. Okay. That's right. Solid crimp, as you can see. It's all the way down. As far as it can go. See what we look like here. Did not break the insulation. Let's do a pull test. Yeah, yeah pretty strong too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you can see, these excel much better than most of these ratcheting. Um, these two at least. Uh, in this crimp test and it did not damage the insulation at this gauge wire, right? Let's go ahead and try to see if we can pry it off. A little force. <clears throat> that was pretty good crimp, by the way. Took a lot of force. Okay, that one was gone. We're going to move on to the next one. Got fresh wire peeled back. And let's go ahead and try this one from Harbor Freight to Pittsburgh. Um, there's an insulated portion uh, right there in the middle and the non-insulated. And I can tell you this insulated portion, of course, is not going to be able to crimp it. I am going to try on the non-insulated side. And I crimped it uh, all the way down, pretty much, and it felt like it broke the insulation. Uh, I'd have to test it. I don't necessarily see it, uh, but let's see how that did. Yeah, pretty strong. Let's put some pliers on it and see if we can rip it out. Okay, that did pretty good. It actually did crimp. It broke the insulation. I mean, broke the wire. 
and that was 100% successful crimp, right? Um, I'd have to test that um, the insulation to see if it broke with my meter. Um, it felt like it did. Um, actually, I think I do see it right there. It did break. Let's see if you can see that. See that? So it did break the insulation. So it's a fail on that portion. And I can tell you right now, this tool, just because of the size, uh, the space on the crimp section, it is not going to be able to, um, in a fully closed position, it will not be able to crimp this, uh, this gauge. Um, here's one that's halfway crimped, and I'm going to just put it in there, just for S and G's. Let's see how it does crimp on it. Wait a minute. It actually looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and try it. All right. La Owa. We're going to give it a try. Here. So here we go. Got some fresh wire. And let's. Set it. Okay. all the way and since it's wider um, it we crimp basically half of the connector right so let's see what it how it feels mm. it feels pretty good it's tight okay let's see uh, let's see what the tool and pry that off what happens? <laughs> it came off. Let's see what we got here. Okay, it uh, it had a pretty good connection, um, but uh, it did fail. So we'll still move it on to the next round. Next up, we got the Tuxin. Uh, 11475 so um, it's got these sections here um, I really don't see this doing anything so we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, 28 gauge section it looks like it has here and let's see what we get all right got the fresh wire inserted and we're gonna try to crimp the 28 gauge section now and we're all the way maximum now let's see what it looks like kind of moved a little bit looks like it did not break the insulation I'd have to test that but let's see how strong it is pretty strong the insulation is going to come off actually it failed um, I'll say it'll just pull that apart with my hand so um, I'll call this a fail this one I will not if I can pull it apart with my hand uh, I don't think that crimp was successful so this one won't go to the next round and the other settings are just even wider than that as you can see the space we got here and look at there so uh, this one uh, we'll go ahead and eliminate it. Next up is the speed walk. Fresh wire. We're going to go with the first um, tooth it has here up front. Um, this is pretty much going to be the only one that will probably be able to do anything. Okay, we're in position. Now we're gonna crimp. Felt like I felt the uh, insulation drip in there. This tool is not made for insulated connectors because some people try to use uh, tools like this for something like this and you damage the, uh, the heat shrink. I actually do not see any damage on this heat shrink. 
Um, doesn't mean there, are, there isn't any, but I don't see it. Looks pretty good. You see? And I was able to just pull right out. So that'll be a fail. And this does not have any other teeth that are suitable or smaller. So this tool is going to be eliminated. Next up is the Delexi. See here. Wiring. One second. All right. Got the wiring. As you can see, that pattern right there. I don't feel that's going to do a very good job. But you never know till you try. Sometimes, right? Let's see what we got. Everything's in place. Okay. All the way. Looks like the insulation was not damaged. Let's see if we can pull it out. <clears throat> Ugh, I cannot pull it out with my hand. Put some pliers on there. Yep, came out pretty easy with the pliers. Um, no wire strips. We'll go ahead and move that one to the next round. Next is the Yara Mate, and it's rated as you can see here 22 to 10 gauge. Um, insulated would be this section here, and non insulated would be there. So we're going to try with the insulated section. All right. So. Insulated is here. Kind of hard to operate it when it's in the back of the tool like that. And I noticed the tool is kind of uh, twisting. So it's like a non uniform crimp we're getting here and I'm all the way all the way down so there it is doesn't look like there's any damage to the heat shrink see how strong it is <clears throat> well <clears throat> pretty strong Let's see if we can pull it out <clears throat> Yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, no strands broke. Um, we'll go ahead and move it to the next round. Okay, and that's it for the uh, non-ratcheting uh, tools. So we're going to now move from this to the uh, smaller gauge that are on the newer cars. In this phase, we're going to move to the factory ODB port, um, 22 to 24 gauge wire, looks like. Um, so we're going to see if uh, these can crimp this. Let's see here. Get you to focus. All right. First, we're going to try the cheapo. That is crimp to the maximum. And let's see if it even holds. Pulls right out. Okay, we'll go to the next one. So now we're going to go with the Quid from Harbor Freight. Crimped all the way. Let's see? Okay. And pulls out. That is a no go. And we've got the Deluxe.
All right, with the maximum. Makes a wider crimp, crimping pattern. See? Hmm, pretty strong. It crimps at a longer distance than a normal, than your normal uh, crimpers. And I was able to pull it out. But, uh, you know, it looks like there might be a strand or something broken off in there, which is not too bad for a manual hand crimper. Okay. Next up is the Laowa. all the way Let's see mm. oh pulled out it was pretty strong but pulled out next we got the Yarmate non-insulated section well fell out in the process of crimping let's see if I can get it in yeah. maybe I'm going to give it a little bit more Double crimp, which I don't think it's going to do anything because this feels completely loose in there. That's a maximum. Yeah, yeah, it can't do anything. Last one we got is the uh, Harbor Freight Pittsburgh, and of course, we're going to do it on the non insulated side, which you shouldn't do because it's just going to damage the uh, heat shrink. But we're doing it just for. Because somebody's going to want to do this or say they do it. So just to show you what happens. And we went all the way. Okay. Mm. Yeah. That suck a bit into it. I'll tell you that. And... It actually failed, the wires failed. That was a successful crimp, believe it or not. So that tells you, out of all these, this is the only one uh, from Harbor Freight that was actually able to crimp this wire successfully um, to a failure at the wire. Um, but of course, um, being that it's a uh, non insulated it breaks the uh, heat shrink, so that kind of defeats the purpose. So. Another option with your standard crimping tool, uh, for example, this Harbor Freight tool, that's about what, six seven ninety nine, does a very excellent job at crimping even at this small gauge. Um, these are sold as just the non-insulated. It does not come with the sleeve. And using this tool in a combination with the non-insulated one is an excellent combination as well. Um, and then you would then, of course, slide your heat shrink over it and you would be able to then um, uh, heat that up and you've got solid protected um, connection. So that is another option using this tool and the non-insulated version. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description of the non-insulated connectors um, and the heat shrink that is very good quality uh, that would uh, pair very well with this option if you wanted to go this route. In conclusion, guys, what we know is these in modern cars from most wiring in modern cars are basically too big uh, to adequately crimp, right? Um, this is what you're going to want to be using to do your crimps um, are the white ones with um, from 26 to 22 gauge. These are the ones that you are going to want to use. You don't want to use these. 
Now, out of the ratcheting um, crimpers um, for insulated heat shrink connectors, I would say my number one pick is going to be this one, the HKS, okay? This one has consistently, with this die, and it also comes with other dies as well. Uh, it's a set. Um, but this is the one I use this for. And at this size die, it actually does consistently crimp very small gauge wires um, every time. And it does not damage the insulation. I highly recommend this one. This is definitely going to be my pick. Uh, all of these are basically in the trash bin. Uh, this is what I'm going to be using. Uh, next up, probably I would say this one does uh, the next best job. But at the price point of this, it doesn't make any sense because it just does not do a tight enough crimp. Uh, this is going to be number one in the ratcheting crimpers, which is unexpected. I expected this to be the best. Now, as the test proved, as we went up to higher gauges like 22 and up, 24, 26 gauge, you're going to want to then move over to non-insulated terminals like this where you can join the wires as you saw in the videos and and use heat shrink uh or tape to uh then protect that um, connector and that is definitely going to make a hundred percent oem quality crimp that is not going to break or fail the wire is going to fail a hundred percent of the times before this crimp fails just like oem level and of course for that i would highly recommend the iCrimp SN2549. Um, the die on this is excellent, um, very high quality. The tool actually feels really good. The ratcheting mechanism, um, it's just an excellent, excellent tool. I don't have anything bad to say about this, to be honest. Now going with the hand tools, of course, ratcheting is preferred because you're always going to have a consistent crimp and it's not going to be dependent on the amount of force you use, distraction, any kind of thing like that. The ratchet is pretty much always going to give you consistency. But if you're going to go with one of these, the manual ones, um, the cheapo, you've seen what it did. Uh, I would recommend this one. I really liked what the Quinn, how it performed. I was actually impressed. Um, then next, I would probably say... For the strongest crimps, believe it or not, this actually did really well. The only issue was, um, I mean, um, you know it's not made for um, insulated connectors, so it damages the heat shrink, so that's an issue. If you were using non-insulated, I would definitely say go with these. Uh, as you know, as you can see here, this broke and damaged the little uh, insulation that comes with on the handles, and this happened right under test that we did. I bought this brand new just for this. so. That's just a note of the quality of this Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight. Um, then I would say this. This makes actually pretty good crimps as well. Uh, it comes with the stripper and a couple of other features. Um, also cut up front in the top. I like that to cut wires um, and needle nose in case you got to pull fuse or anything like that. It's pretty handy. I definitely like this. I'm going to be keeping this. Uh, to tell you right now, I'll be these three. I'll be keeping around for sure. Um, I'm going to have to probably do something about this handle, right? But uh, this is going to be my needle nose go-to. And if I need a manual crimp, I will be going to these. Or stripper as well. It's pretty good. Strippers here is pretty good as well. So these are my three picks on the manual if you had to go that route. And of course, the next option is the solder sleeve. As you saw, I demonstrated it. And you're going to want something like this the uh, torch to activate the, uh, the melt solder, the solder in the middle, and uh, links in the description of all these products. It comes with three different tips, by the way. Um, that's one of them. Uh, links in the description, guys. Uh, I, there's, this was not a sponsored video. Everything you've seen here, I paid with my own funds. Like and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button, guys. Was there anything I missed? Anything you'd like to see? a uh, different comparison put some comments down in the bottom let me know what was your opinion which tool did you think was going to perform better than the other ones let me know anything else you want me to test like i said put it in the comments and i'll see you on the next one this is just to show you what you can do with the right tools and the right equipment uh, one customer asked me uh, this is a ambient air temperature sensor and of course this is where you also definitely need to have very good solid connection he uh, did not want to wait for the time to order the harness and the cost. He offered me the 100 bucks to create him a harness. 
And I told him, yeah, I can make one, uh, basically factory specs. Okay. So I was able to using this kit, this tool that you've seen, um, <clears throat> as you can see here are, let me bring this in for you so you can see the crimps that it did. See that? So you can see the level of crimps and that is 100% solid, not going anywhere. This will rip the wire before it um, rips the, uh, before the wires pull out, it'll rip. And on the other side, let me show you. See that? And that's not going anywhere. So that's what you can do with this tool. And this kit, of, I'll leave a link also in the description, of course. For this, it'll come with pretty much all the connectors and the little insulators that you're going to need right for each size you know you've got spades you've got you know the little loops you've got um unions pretty much everything you need yeah and once we get this installed in the car we're just going to basically connect with our ultra dielectric loose red we're just going to stuff the uh perimeter of the connector on both ends and that will keep any moisture and air out of there and will have zero corrosion. This is rated at, uh, has a dropping point of over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not going in there. When it's, once the grease is there, it's going to be there forever pretty much unless you want to remove it. All right, this is going to be a demonstration on using the proper gauge uh, butt um, connector with a uh, 20 gauge wire. So you can see um, basically exactly how to do it. We're going to feed one in end, if I can get it to get in there without, you want to make sure you don't have any um, ends of the wire sticking out or anything like that. Okay, we got them all in, all the strands are in. Then we're going to use our tool and we're going to Make sure we line the tooth up exactly to the butt splice on the end there. As you can see in there, I think. Okay, and we're gonna crimp. We're also gonna crimp a little further down to get to the division. As you can see where it divides both sides. We're gonna crimp a little further down again And there is our crimp. And we know this does a very good job on crimping this size. And we're gonna do a pull test before we actually heat this down. So let me get this in. Got one little strand out there. One stubborn strand. All right, got all the strands in, and now we're going to go ahead and crimp. Okay, we're going to crimp the rest of that. Kind of had this on the outside, but it's still okay. Didn't damage the shrink. Um, and that is going to be a solid connection. I'm pretty sure I can't pull this out. No way. That is crimped. Yeah. The wire is going to rip before this breaks. So now we're going to heat this up. We're going to use our torch. cut out there we go 
And we're going to put that in there so you can see how long it takes for this to shrink. See it coming together there. That side is shrunk. This side is shrunk. There it is. Now we just let that cool off. Now the strength, there's uh, glue also inside of this. So what it's going to do is stick to the wire as well. Um, so you have a combined strength of the crimp you've done and also this glue along as long along with the heat shrink right so I'm gonna let that cool off and I'm gonna try a pull test on that okay it's been about a minute I'm gonna try to zoom you in a little bit so you can see trying to see how the glue came out a little bit on the end and you can see the crimp right it's pretty much translucent now so you can see the quality of the crimp and also the heat shrink let's try a little pull test on that i'm pretty sure the wire is going to break before this crimp fails oh that's pretty tough man oh. i actually got the wire out but that was a lot of force for that to happen. I still think this was a pretty good crimp. This side didn't budge at all. As you can see, this was the side that failed. That could be mitigated by um, probably an extra crimp or so, but that was super strong. Also, to show you the strength of the glue, if you look in there, you see the yellow? That's the actual jacket of the wire. See that? It actually ripped it out. It did not release the glue at all from the uh, jacket of the wire. It's still in there. And it did, you see the teeth? Actually, it looks like some of the strands might have broken off in there. I think so. And you can see uh, where it did bite down. Um, a little bit more crimping and that definitely would not have come out just like the other side how it stood still so yeah this this is definitely for strength and your best connectivity this is the way you want to go um, another option okay guys I decided to do another round I really hit the crimp like probably about three times on each side just to really affirm that we had uh, no way of this coming out so now I'm going to hit it heat it Heat it up again with the with the torch. Hit it. All right, cooled off. Now let's see what happens. If I can get this apart again. <clears throat> I need something to hold this one. This one is a little bit short. <clears throat> Let's see. Put some pliers on it. Uh, where's my grip at? <clears throat> I'm gonna need two pliers for this. <clears throat> Hold on. Two pliers. Now let's see. Oh. <clears throat> okay so as expected the wire with two pliers the wire actually broke 
which is what should happen at a factory level crimp. See that? The wire broke out of the crimp. The crimp did not fail. The heat shrink as well did not fail. As you can see, that's still there. Well, the this part of the shrink, it broke at the actual crimp. You see that? This side is still 100% intact. And I had to use two pliers to put so much force against this to be able to do this. This was not going anywhere. This is 100% solid crimp at a 20 gauge wire. So this is highly recommended. Uh, this ratcheting tool from HKS. This is what you want to have solid reproducible crimps um, at this smaller gauge wire. You know, using the heat shrink, heat shrink uh, butt connectors. Like I said, the other option, if you want to go non-insulated, uh, you could use the standard crimpers such as this, for example, from Pittsburgh. So that's it, guys.